so man having to overcome that um i mean literally i was like dude i have embarrassed myself i've embarrassed my family like i need to focus and if i'm going to get to where i want to get to i have to prioritize you know going to class being the best student i can be being the best you know um <clears throat> player that i can be and i just mm -hmm. you know put the blinders on so to speak and just focus man and i had my best year statistically <laughs> We are here with Simeon Castile, uh, ex-Alabama football player, NFL veteran, and owner of Steel Academy. Yes, sir. So uh, thank you for taking time to sit and talk and share some of your story of with course, us. Of course, man. I'm glad to be here, man. I'm, I'm glad to uh, be able to share this space um, you know, with you. Man, we go back uh, a couple years now, so yeah. I'm... I'm Man, it's my pleasure. I guess we'll go ahead and start from the end and come back okay. to the beginning. So yeah. what are some of your goals that uh, you were doing as a trainer, a business owner, things like that? Um, honestly, I mean, it's always been a dream um, of mine um, ever since really I retired from football to own my own place. Um, and my dad and my older brother, we were, you know, we would always talk about, man, it would be so cool to have our own training facility. Mm -hmm. And then when the, I really just think that it was the right time for us. I mean, 2020 really hasn't been the, the best year to start a business, uh, so to speak. Um, but man, we are, uh, blessed to obviously still be open, um, being able to help um, really anybody who comes through those doors. Um, that's really what we want to do, mm -hmm. to be a place um, where we can help pe help people get better in every aspect of their life, uh, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Um, and that's what we want to do, man. We want to be able to um, help our community um, really in any way that we can. And just <clears throat> with fitness um, and athletics, us all three of us me my dad and my brother having an athletic background um we just felt like fitness was a great way to to impact lives mm -hmm. what and you recently had a, a second son yeah man <laughs> um what's how's that oh dude being a dad is it's it's better than people make it out to be like mm -hmm. I, I mean honestly when i had my first son i was like dude how are how are guys not you know, raving about how amazing being a father is. Yeah. I absolutely love it, dude. It is the best, um, one of the best experiences. And, you know, I, dude, I would think everyone should be able to experience it as, you know, as men, just, there's nothing like it. Yeah. <laughs> it really, I mean, it is awesome. Um, so we have our, my oldest son, he's uh, 18 months, a year and a half, um, mm -hmm. and, we call him Deuce. He's Simeon Jeremiah the second, and then we have a five-month-old, um, and his name is uh, Israel Joseph. So, man, they are growing fast, and uh, again, man, I can't explain how awesome and how much I love being a dad. It's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Okay. Take us back to, uh, I guess, I guess whatever you would consider the starting point. Maybe for you, it would be like uh, the day I was born or something like that. But the starting point to where you realize um, you wanted to accomplish the things you have accomplished and the things that you're trying to accomplish now. I would probably say with with football, man, it was early. Like just because my, I mean, my dad played at Alabama. He played in the pros. And so, I mean... I wanted to be like my dad. You know what I mean? He was a great a great dad, a great role model. So, I mean, me and Tim um, wanted to play football at an early age, although my dad wouldn't let me. He never let me play peewee. Uh, so that always used to, you know, <laughs> piss me off. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I can remember, you know, being about five and six years old, um, you know, just 
loving playing football outside with my friends. I mean, we played all sports, but um, man, I knew, I mean, around that time, five or six, that man, I wanted to play football. I wanted to, um, and be good at it. I, I feel like I've always been competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, man, I was always just, even with my friends, you know, racing all the time, you know what I'm saying? Just doing things to compete, like, you know, see who can do the most backflips, like all kinds of different right. crazy stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, I would say five or six is when I really, you know, understood, Hey, I want to play football and I want to do it at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously there was a, a lot of things that transpired between, you know, six years old and <laughs> when it came to fruition. But yeah, mm-hmm. that's probably the, the okay. earliest memory I have so, of it. <clears throat> so the biggest thing on like these interviews is is kind of to to show people. A lot of times people think there's point A and then point B, and then it's like, oh, okay, boom. And so a lot because a lot of times people don't know other people's stories, so they may yeah. see. Oh, uh, Simeon Castile, um, you know, his dad played in the league. So, uh, you know, he's going to play in the league. And then that, that's it. You know, it's just, and so. There's a lot I, more that goes into right. it. Right. Yeah. And so I, I just want, I want you to kind of share some of the, so what were some of the, uh, some of the things that you had to either eliminate like distractions or setbacks that you had that you had to overcome, yeah. whatever to accomplish your I mean, goals. Honestly, dude, um, just getting to the NFL is just hard, period. I don't care who your dad is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. okay, what genes you have? Yes, it, I will say, it. yes, it can be easier for some guys to make it than others, but mm-hmm. everybody who has been successful and has made it to the highest level in something has had to overcome things. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. Um, and just for my own experience, I mean, yes, God has to bless certain people with certain gifts and talents. Like genetics. Yes, stuff, gen- yeah, you yeah. know, obviously. But, bro, I mean, the amount of work that I put in, the amount of hours of training, um, I, and, you know, starting at an early age, man, my dad didn't let me play football until I was in seventh grade. But once we decided, like, once I was like, hey, dad, okay, you know, I'm old enough to understand, you know, I want to play high school, I want to play in college, and my dream is to be an NFL football player. Like, once I became of age where I could communicate that to him and he knew, hey, this is something that my son wants to accomplish, okay, he was all in about helping me accomplish that. And... Bro, I mean, summers, me, I mean, I would be up at, you know, 6 a.m. out on the track, and it was just me and my brother. I mean, all our friends sleep, you know what I'm saying? So hours and hours of training, Um, and, bro, we used to just work, like, and I keep referencing my dad because he kind of, well, he helped guide us. I mean, he was my secondary coach. He was my DB coach for, I mean, my ninth and 10th grade year. Um, but obviously I listened to him because he was someone who had done what I was trying to do. Right. You know what I mean? And man, my dad is old school. He played for Bear Bryant, you know, and, you know, when he was in the NFL, dude, they had three a days. <laughs> Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. bro, like, I can remember, like, man, there was a time I was probably like Three eight or nine. Years. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. Like, dude, ain't nobody. <laughs> no, ain't nobody trying to do that. But, right. bro, I mean, the thing, the way my dad trained when he was growing up and the things that he really had to overcome as a kid, it forged a, a toughness in him that he, you know, tried to pass on to us. So the training that we would do was, I mean, dude, it was hard. Um, and what I was saying was like, I can remember like, man, we were probably eight or nine. And I mean, my dad was like, hey, we're going to run to the barber shop to get our hair cut. I'm like nine years old, dude. It's like five miles. I'm mm. like, dude, what the heck? So that's, I'm just saying, that's the type of dad that I had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just doing crazy stuff. <laughs> Um, but I will say uh, everything that my dad made us do, um, he did it with us, right. you know what I'm saying? But 
So all through high school, dude, we, me and my brother, we would work our behinds off. Like, mm -hmm. yes, I did have some talent, but I wasn't the biggest, fastest or strongest kid. You know what I'm saying? I had mm -hmm. to work to pull all of the talent or maximize the amount of talent that God had given me. Um, <clears throat> so I worked my butt off in high school, earned a full ride to Alabama. Um, I get to Alabama, I'm playing as a freshman, uh, had a pretty good, you know, good freshman season. Um, my soft, well, I was starting, I was starting at nickel uh, my freshman year as a true freshman. I, I mean, you know, I had success early. My first game at Alabama, I intercepted a pass, ran it back for a touchdown, pick hey. six, my first game, you know, <laughs> yeah, first yeah, college yeah. game in Bryant Denny. You know what I'm saying? Like it uh -huh. doesn't get, I mean, as a DB, dude, it don't get any better than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? So, so then fast forward to my sophomore year in college. Um, I mean, I had some success. I'm, I mean, my, my sophomore year was the best year that we had at Alabama. I mean, our defense was stacked. Um, we ended up going 10 and two that year, but me, I was living it up, um, partying, drinking, you know, the whole nine, not focused. So um, bowl game comes around and I'm academically ineligible to go to the Cotton Bowl. Dang. Yes. And wow. bro, I don't know if you know, like, I mean, you know, Alabama's big time program. I mean, right. it's even bigger now, but even, you know, back then, um, <clears throat> So, you know, my name is scrolling across the ticker, Alabama defensive back, Simeon Castile, ineligible for the bowl game. You want to talk about embarrassing and mm. embarrassing for me, embarrassing for my family. Um, having to overcome that, um, I mean, literally, I was like, dude, I have embarrassed myself. I've embarrassed my family. Like, I need to focus and if I'm going to get to where I want to get to, I have to prioritize, you know, going to class, being the best student I can be, being the best, you know, um, <clears throat> player that I can be. And I just, mm -hmm. you know, put the blinders on, so to speak, and just focus, man. And I had my best year statistically my junior year um, after that sophomore year when I was ineligible you know, was first team all SEC, um, led the team in turnovers, interceptions, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, man, I mean, that really, it grew me up, so to speak, man. I just had to really start to take things serious if I wanted to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish, which was to play in the NFL. So that, um, that junior year, you just – you just basically cut off all the extra stuff. Oh, yeah, stuff. bro. Like, literally, like, after the games, like, I would be in my dorm room. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and this sounds crazy, but I would be either, like, um, studying some, you know, playing video games or reading my Bible or something like mm -hmm. that. Like, I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, going out and partying and doing all those things like I, like I had. So there's this, there's this um, analogy in the uh, like second guy theory video that talks about um, if you, let's just say you have a, uh, you're on an island and your goals are on this other island and yeah. there's a gate that's constantly closing yeah. before you can get there. And everyone has a boat. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own canoe and they're trying to row over there. And a lot of times people are working hard, mm -hmm. but then they realize, wait a minute, I've got some like weights in the canoe too. Imagine how much faster I would I get, row. how much more I could get if I throw that stuff off. And yeah. then it sounds to me like your junior year, and this is the first time we've talked about this. Yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I don't really know your, your backstory like mm -hmm. that, but it sounds to me like, um, like that's kind of, you know, you, you were like, wait a minute, there's some weights in here. Yeah. I'm throwing these weights off. Yeah. And then you started taking off yes. from there. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Um, just because all of the ex all of the things that I was spending my time doing, it was slowing me down. It was weighing me down from, number one, being the man that, you know, the Lord wanted me to be, being the, you know, the young man in college that, you know, God wanted me to be. And, um, 
and then again, just like you said, that my goal was to make it to the NFL. That mm-hmm. island was, you know, I'm here. That goal was there. And yes, it was like, you know, these four years that you spend at college, okay. I also started to realize, okay, I've already burned through two of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It ain't like, you, okay, well, let me roll backwards, get back to the starting point and start over. No, you can't do that. Yeah. You already halfway, you didn't, you, you rode halfway already. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you look at, oh, okay, yes. What can I get out of this boat that's weighing me down? Mm-hmm. Uh, partying. Okay. Let me get that stone out, so mm-hmm. to speak. And right. so I just had to, you know, like I said, man, I just had to focus and get some things, um, out of my canoe <laughs> that that were weighing me down man um and you know a lot of people can get caught just a lot of people have a lot of different distractions that right. can come along that um hinder you from achieving what you want to achieve mm-hmm. or um if it doesn't completely block you from achieving it it just takes you longer to get there and you have to work that much harder um to accomplish what you want to accomplish it's like instead of just running a a race now you're running it with a sled (laughs) you know like you may still finish but you're gonna be you're gonna be putting way more energy in than everyone else yes yeah so why not (laughs) you know like why not let that hard work pay off for everything it could pay off for you know what i mean and then okay so so then uh senior year i mean my junior well Kind of, yes, but I mean, I. this is also part of, I feel like, you know, another hurdle that I had to overcome to ultimately get to my dream, which was mm-hmm. to play in the NFL. Like, okay, so my senior year, Coach Saban comes in. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously looking back now, everybody said, man, you know, well, Coach Saban is one of the be- greatest coaches, obviously, to right. ever coach college football. But that first year, bro, was – Hell, (laughs) bro, you think Coach Saban is hard now, man, dude, and especially, you know, coming in, um, trying to turn the program around, trying to implement, hey, this is my way of doing things. Mm. Dude, I mean, bro, he was, I mean, he's already no nonsense, but I mean, that was like another level. Oh, bro, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then just going from, um, the leadership that we were under my first three years to coach Saban, it was just like night and day. Um, and you know, I'm not knocking the coaches who were there before him. It was just, it was just a just different, different, yeah, it's just different. It um, sense. and so, I mean, bro, coach Saban, man, we were, our conditioning test, I'll never forget. Our conditioning test was supposed to be 26, one, 110 yard sprints, right? You know, everybody has their time to make, right? bro. We ended up running 43 of these things. And, wow. dude, uh, yeah, wow, is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, you know how hot it gets in Tuscaloosa, man? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was, I mean, I have three, uh, you know, football experiences that I've, um, I mean, that literally made me think about, okay, you know, I... <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You willing to throw in the towel on years of work you've done because yeah. you like, dude, this this might not be for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> that was one of them. That day I was just like, bro, I don't know, man. But yeah. obviously, you know, I ain't yeah, quit. Yeah. But yeah, you, I mean, we've all been there. You, yeah, you have those times when yeah, you're, you're, you're running like, down on kickoff <laughs> or something. <laughs> And you get blindsided, then you think, man, those stands look really comfortable, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> I'm telling you, I could be over there cheering with, for, for these guys right now. Right. But, yeah, that was one of them, man. But, okay. um, I mean, honestly, even just how that whole season went, you know, it was tough. Um, just anytime you come in and, you know, for, just for my own experience, Coach Saban, he coaches the DBs. And, you know, having one – coach my first three years and then coach Saban comes in and he wants everything done a different way Mm -hmm. all the terminology is different the entire scheme is different our technique is different dude I I I mean it was hard to make those adjustments for me and I I mean for me having come off of the success that I had my junior year you know we kind of butted heads a little bit um just because I'm like man I know what works for me you know what I mean? Like, yeah. our, just I'll just give an example. Our press technique, he wanted to change it completely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if 
one of the things about playing DB is being confident. Yeah. If you're not confident, bro, you can forget it. You you know, you can forget it. Yeah. <laughs> it really starts up here in your mind. So when you get up there at the line, if you're not confident in what you, you know, what you need to get done, mm -hmm. you can hang it up. And so honestly, it was a struggle for me. I didn't perform as well my senior year as I did my junior year. I feel like just because there was a lot of changes that you know, Coach Saban wanted to make. And, you know, I was trying to make them to appease him, you know what I'm saying? But I was also trying to keep some of the things that I was used to doing. Um, they got you placed. That, yeah, yeah, that made, placed. yeah, that made me successful. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just hard, man. Um, and then just learning his playbook, oh, oh. it was just, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just for everyone. Um, not just me, and I, I mean, I knew it was going. I knew it was hard because I was actually studying the playbook. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, coach, if I'm not getting it, I know these cats that ain't studying, <laughs> not getting it. You right. know what I'm saying, dude? That we have mental errors on every play somewhere because, mm -hmm. you know, I know guys aren't, you know, aren't picking it up. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, just to fast forward, man, that my senior year did not go n the way that I thought it would. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to the to the draft like honestly I mean after my junior year I mean my senior year I was still first team all SEC um and you know from my junior year to my senior year like my you know uh draft projections I didn't hear anything later than like third round for me mm -hmm. and then draft comes up <clears throat> I don't get a single call through the entire draft wow first round second round third round fourth round fifth round, sixth round, seventh round. So I'm sitting there thinking, and, you know, I'm seeing guys get drafted from, you know, Kent State. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the – I'm not knocking nobody yeah. that – Yeah, They yeah, find yeah. talent anywhere. But yeah, I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. I've been first team all SEC two years in a row. You know what I'm saying? I accumulate, oh, what I have, I think nine picks over my last two two seasons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and, – and I didn't – I haven't heard from any – you know, team, um, as far as my draft grade, like, like I said, later than third round. Mm -hmm. And so my expect expectations were, I mean, I, I did, I think I was going first round. No, but to not get drafted at all, that was never, that was not even on my radar at oh, all. Wow. No, I, I didn't even know that. No, I did not think that I would be an undrafted free agent. Hmm. And so when that happened, bro, I was, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I was, it was like a punch to the gut. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, when that happens, you, bro, you can either do one of two things. You know what I'm saying? You can either go in, you can either shut down, go in the tank and um, make excuses, you know, whatever the excuse may be. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. X, Y, and Z happen, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't really matter. You can either do that, make excuses, or you can let it motivate you. And so I was just like, man, screw this. Whatever team I go to. So I ended up going to the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I just let it motivate me, man, to be like, dude, I can play. I know I can play. That rookie training camp for me, was, I, I just felt a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it it was one of those times in my life where I learned to trust in the Lord um, because there are situations and circumstances that the Lord is going to allow to come into your life um, that are going to test you to where you have to depend on him. Mm. And this was one of them for me. Mm. I had just gotten married. Um, you know, I think of my signing bonus, I think maybe it was twelve hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. But, you know. That ain't no money. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and bro, how about my first day of practice? Like the very first day, I wake up late. So oh, that twelve hundred, that twelve hundred dollars that they gave me, <laughs> I ended up giving it right back to them. I got fined for being late to practice. I was literally like three minutes late. I'm I'm getting onto the field, but they had already started stretching. Oh man! Yep, oh, that's that's the that's worst the, feeling bro. when you 
you you run towards the field house or something. You see everyone already walking out there with their pads. Oh, son, you want to talk about? You know oh, that man. feeling too. Oh, like no, when you man. wake up, you already know you late, <laughs> bro. Your heart. <laughs> oh man, dude, that's crazy. It was terrible. And so even for me, like thinking, like, man, this is how I'm starting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Starting my first rookie mini camp mm -hmm. or uh, training camp. And so, um, needless to say, though, man, the Lord really helped me. Um, I mean, because I really um, had a great training camp. Um, but, bro, I was praying <laughs> for real. Like, mm -hmm. I was just like, Lord, if you don't help me, you know, if you don't help me, um, then I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, I really had to trust him because, like I said, man, I'm on the bottom of the totem pole. You ain't getting nearly as many reps as their first-round picks. Um, and we had two first-round corners, Jonathan Joseph and Leon Hall, when I first got there. Mm -hmm. um, so it ain't like I'm going to get a ton of reps. You know what I'm saying? They got millions of dollars invested in these guys. So who you going? Who you think going to be getting the reps? Right. Those guys. So I'm like, Lord, when I, when I get in, I'm going to need you to help me make plays and mm -hmm. that's what he did but um again man it but it was one of those things that i had to i mean yes people look at me well played at Broadwood, all american played at alabama all sec and he played in the nfl but bro my road to get there it wasn't you know um it wasn't smooth sailing so there, there's the one league. one part that uh like i said i didn't know about the uh undrafted part yeah i didn't know that um so maybe we should take these mics off. I'll get some of those. No, <laughs> no, but I think, so I think that kind of, I've never really thought about it from that perspective because, you know, for me coming from like a small school, you know, a D2 school, I'd always, I'd always had the perspective of, oh man, like, you know, the guy at Alabama or Florida State or whatever, like, you know, it's, uh, they, they know they're getting an opportunity and blah, blah, blah. And so, so then I would always think, oh, there's, you know, that's, that's, once you get there, then it's just kind of easy, you know? <laughs> yeah. But then I never really thought from the perspective of, like, they always say the worst hits in boxing are the ones you don't see coming, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if I know from coming from, like, Henderson State or something, oh, okay, um, it's going to be hard for me to even get an opportunity in rookie yeah. minicamp or something, yeah. right? But if I'm at Alabama or something, I got I'm a two-time SEC first team SEC, you know, team and stuff. And then they say, "Oh yeah, you're gonna go third round at least." Mm -hmm. And then they no one calls. That's like that's a hit you don't see coming. Exactly. And so um, I don't want to. I, I do kind of want you to go back a little bit too, just kind of talk about. You touched on a little bit like your mindset in that time, but. I think it's important for the people kind of watching the stuff, whatever they're going through with those hits that they don't see coming. Like, what was your mentality? Because I'm sure it wasn't like immediately, oh, okay, uh, I'm just going to work harder. You know, <laughs> like what, where, what, what was it I mean, it like? there was disappointment for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I didn't become first team all SEC just, you know, there was a lot of work that was put into, right. you know, getting the success that I had at Alabama. And then, you know, the expectations for getting, you know, to get drafted, um, <clears throat> they were legitimate for me. It's not like, right. you know, this was just wishful thinking. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I honestly, I really didn't have long to sit and, you know, pout about it. Right. You know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? I'm like, look, yes, it sucked. It happened. And that's, I mean, honestly, the nature of playing DB too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Guess what? <laughs> you gonna get beat mm -hmm. on some plays, and you know, guy make a catch, will beat you for a touchdown. You gonna have to come back the next series. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They they take you on a deep ball. They ended up they end up catching it. What you gonna do? Okay, we in the red zone now. They didn't score. Are you just gonna sulk, pow? Oh well, he caught a deep ball on me. And you, no, you know what I'm saying. You gotta be able to bounce back, put that last play out. Mm -hmm. of your mind and get ready for the next play right. um so that was kind of you know my mentality um going into this situation my mm -hmm. you know my rookie minicamp 
Um, look, it sucks. Yes, you did not get drafted. Can't change it. Mm -hmm. So what you what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. And like I said, like I said, man, I had just gotten married. I'm like, dude, I, bro, I gotta. <laughs> I got to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't, no t I ain't got time to be sad, feel sorry for myself and all that. I mean, it's time to, you, I, I literally had to, I mean, you know, look, I got to work harder now than I ever had. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, honestly, I feel like, I feel, I say I didn't have a choice, but you always have a choice. Right. I could have laid down. Yep. And just been like, well, screw this, man. It's not fair, whatever. And one thing, one of the guys that I also had on, um, I think I've told you about him before. I think your brother knows him, Otis Leverett. Yeah. He, he said uh, sometimes people don't actually want to win. They just want a good, they want a good excuse why they didn't, didn't. really have to. Mm -hmm. Like they, they look over that fence and they see, oh, this is all the work it's going to take to get there. Uh, it's like when you hear something that, like a good, a good excuse like a good doctor's note or something where it's like <laughs> yeah you know i would i would have got drafted but yeah. you know and then you decided you know I, it is what it is i'm going to yeah. i'm going to make something happen yeah. you know and so i think um that that's what a lot of people today especially this year 2020 you know like that's what a lot of people need to hear because you can't you can't control the external circumstances, mm -hmm. but you can control how you're going to react to them. That's it, know? man. Yep. And so um, yeah, because if I could have yeah. control getting drafted, yeah, I would. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, of course I'm going to draft myself. Yeah. You yeah. Know first saying? pick, <laughs> first <laughs> round. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you, bro, that's life, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's life. And in order, you know, I tell our clients in here all the time. Look, you're not going to get stronger unless you put your muscles under tension. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You're not going to grow. All right? You're not going to grow in life if you ain't ever going through anything that's going to challenge you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So stop running. For, we, we always want the easy route. There's no growth in the easy route. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, even in the Bible, the Lord said, look, life is going to be hard. Mm hmm you're going to endure trials. You're going to encounter trials. Okay. But those trials are going to produce patience, character, endurance. There are things that come from them. Mm -hmm. So we got to stop running from them all the time. And you know what's crazy? Um, the other day I was actually, I just bought a house and there's this bush that's kind of out of control. And I was looking up <laughs> like how to, how to cut it down without like just destroying it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's called like pruning. Of and course. I never really knew the real process of pruning. Yeah. And you know how the Bible talks about um, those that don't produce fruit will be yeah. cut off and yeah. thrown into the fire. Yeah. And it says, but those who do produce fruit, mm -hmm. he's going to prune. So you're going to get cut either way. way. You know, like which, so yes. there's no, there's no avoiding it. Nope. So it's either okay i'm gonna get hurt what's gonna be the result of you your, of your or of your getting cut right you see what i'm saying yeah. that's what that's where the key lies mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying so that, i mean and i feel like the lord allows oppor or yeah well they are opportunities you know what i'm saying even like this year has been tough for a lot of people when you encounter tough situations and tough times there is an opportunity to grow but you can also squander that opportunity and not grow. Right. Um, and that's just, it goes back to what you were saying. You might not be able to control the external circumstance, but you can control how you react to it and how you respond. Yeah. So. Cool, man. I think that, I mean, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll probably have some more time later on to also, also where you can just share just your story about just this uh, facility yeah. that you've, you know, kind of created a, a, a group of people that, that do more functional type movements, things mm -hmm. like that. And we can get into that yeah. uh, some other time too. But really just wanted to introduce you to uh, introduce everybody to you and your story and uh, kind of give you an opportunity to share and uh, motivate people that may be, you know, looking from the outside at different people. They think, yeah. oh man, no one's going through what I'm going through. But then they see, oh wow, this person did. Yes. Yeah. And bro, my, um, I would love, you know, I would love to come back um, and do another interview. And I mean, there's even, bro, there's a lot more, there's a lot more to people 
um, than what meets the eye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even in my story, you know, um, there's a lot that I that I didn't get to talk about. Even going from, um, you know, where I was when I first got into the NFL, even you know, even to now, and the hardships that I've had to go through. Um, you know, going through a divorce, blowing my knee out. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of different things that, you know, still life is going to, you know, throw at you. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, you got to overcome and, you know, I, I'll end, end it with this is just, man, without the, without Jesus Christ, bro, I, I wouldn't be where I am at, I, where I am today. Hey, I'm Simeon Castile. I'm a father. I'm a son of Christ. I'm a business owner and I am the second guy.